Tell us how uh, the impact in this, in this regard, if we look at vote buying, for yes. instance, uh, that has happened in previous elections. We're yes. hoping that this time around the EFCC will be able to contain Correct. that and Correct. ILEC will not tolerate that. Yes. But tell us, what implications lies whenever votes are being bought? Whenever votes are being bought? Well, whenever votes are being bought, now there is a law that such a person, if such a person is caught buying votes and you mean you spend your money to buy votes, not that you have made yourself acceptable to the people by fulfilling all your electoral, uh, election pledges, but you now buy votes, which is contrary to the law, then, you know, the penitentiary is there for you. You're going to prison. That is it. That's it. And the law, if the law is enforced, that is. But like I said, so what we suffer from in this country is not the paucity of laws. We, we have the laws regarding all aspects of our lives, but the enforcement of these laws, you know, the non-enforcement of these laws has always been the rub. But did you agree then with those who uh, subscribe to the school of thought that electoral offenses are not necessarily financial crimes? Electoral offenses, well, electoral offenses may not be financial crimes, but they are crimes nevertheless. They are crimes. Under Section 38 of the Evidence Act, if you commit any, 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 uh, any electoral offense, it must be proved beyond reasonable doubt. By and you know that is the standard of Who's proof. the prosecutor? Eh? Who prosecutes? Who pro the state. Not which, I mean, which EFCC represents? EFCC? EFCC. Even, represents though, even though it may not be a financial crime? No, even, even if it's not a financial crime, but at least... Well, you are buying vote. What are you use, What are you going to use to buy the votes? Bre mm. Bread? Okay. Are you going to use pieces of paper to buy uh, to buy vote? Let, you are going to uh, use money. So that's where money comes in. Let's hear what the politician and the lawmaker thinks on, on this matter. He's in Abuja. Mark Bay. Well, thank you, Honorable Mark Bila of uh, Benue State. Is still is with us in the studio. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Good morning, Mark Bay. Good morning. So you have heard uh, Mr. Kiri there talking about his thoughts on INE collaborating with the EFCC uh, to ensure that uh, the source of campaign funds, uh, you know, kept on the straight and narrow. What are your thoughts on what has been said so far in terms of the many questions that this collaboration raises? Okay. Um, this supposed collaboration raises a lot of questions. As much as we are all advocates of observance of the rules of engagement with regards to elections, campaign funding, and of course, we are not in support of the buying of votes. But uh, the INIC chairman also might be jumping the gun because, uh, like Chamberlain rightly pointed out, what premise really is the EFCC getting involved with the INIC in this regard? Even as the National Assembly, we would be curious as to investigate if no laws are being flouted, if responsibilities of the police are not being taken up in this regard by the EFCC as well. A crime is a crime, and the, as the last time I checked, the law enforcement agency in the country so far is the Nigeria Police Force. Now, as it regards specifically the issue of... Uh, vote buying for instance at what instance will the efcc get involved are they going to be at the polling units mm. at what instance would you recommend yeah. that the efcc get involved we see from the 2015 elections uh, that some people some really members of the of the former political pardon some members of the party the ruling party uh, are currently facing uh, you know prosecution in the courts over the source of campaign funds. And, you know, it's always been a very, uh, you know, murky situation when parties are asked where precisely do they get their own source of, camp the source of campaign funds. Uh, do you think that the EFCC will be appropriate in that area or do you think it should come in on the day of uh, the election since we're talking about vote buying? You know, these are the questions that we should actually be asking the INEC chairman and the EFCC boss. 
because they obviously sat down to conceptualize this collaboration. So, but you pointed out an issue which is important to also highlight. When we start to see campaigns where huge amounts of money are being donated to a party, yes, probably at that stage, you can invite the parties involved and say, okay, we would like to verify the sources of this monies. Are they legitimate? You understand, are they within the bounds of the provisions of the, uh, the uh, Electoral Act? Will politicians be, you know? will they be happy about that? Now, well, every well-meaning and transparent politician shouldn't mind if that question is posed. Now, the issue we have to always remember is the EFCC in itself is an institution of government, and we want to make sure it is not used as a tool of intimidation to muscle the opposition or any dissenting voices in the polity. I and had these, to laugh because are, transparency the, and, and politi politics don't usually go in the same breath, uh, especially no, but, with but, politicians but Mark, and their, and their source is, of funding. So when you say any transparent and well-meaning politician, I'm wondering where do they exist? Now, Mark, that I would want to even ask you, do you not presuppose that there are no transparent politicians in this country? Not when it comes to their source of funding. I mean, we've seen, not. for instance, when governors are asked, how much precisely do you have for security funds, for instance, a security vote? Uh, not a lot of governors have been able to account. And this, uh, this is something that the House of Reps has used as a jab in the past. Well, I would like to point out to you that you're looking at a politician that espouses transparency in all of his conduct and even in the process of his election. Honorable. And with regards to, sorry, with regards to security funding, mm -hmm. it is in the public domain what is allocated to every state in terms of that. We have a Freedom of Information Bill. This information can be obtained. So I don't see how any governor is concealing what he's been 